again, good morning, everyone. Today, I would like to um, to share some some insights and some reflections on the learning crisis in the Philippines, in in, in particular, and um, some recommendations to recover from the learning losses. And we we hear from um, Dr. Orbet at the beginning that even before the pandemic, the Philippines was already facing a learning crisis. And we have seen uh, some of these numbers that I'm that I'm sharing. Uh, this, uh, um, these graphs from the CPLM, which was um, uh, an initiative from UNICEF and other partners to measure the learning levels in, in Southeast Asia. So we found that only 10% of the Filipino students at grade five were uh, reaching the, the minimum expected level and 17% for, for mathematics. So this was um, a significant low and, and it was an, an issue of concern that also reconfirmed the results for secondary level from PISA that came out a year before um, um, that tested the learning levels in mathematics, in reading, and science for those who are 15 years old. And uh, as um, uh, you all might remember, the Philippines was uh, the last one in reading among 79 countries and second to last one in, in mathematics and, and science. So this was one of the first signals that we got um, back in 2019, when the results came out that uh, there was a learning crisis that we all knew and, and we all um, had seen um, the results from the national achievement test, but this was the first international test that um, brought these results. So around 80% of the Filipino students at the secondary level were not achieving the proficiency in, uh, in reading and math. And there were other indicators from, from PISA test um, beyond the, the, the cognitive uh, skills part. No? For example, 60% of the Filipino students that were part of, of the sample reported that they had been bullied at least a few times in the last month, no? while the average for, for the OECD countries was uh, one third of that. No? In fact, the Philippines was the country among the 79 that participated in, in PISA with the highest level of, of bullying uh, self-reported by by the students you know? and and this is also related to another important finding from from the PISA test on what it was called the growth mindset and this is defined in in the PISA test as uh, how the students perceive the, their intelligence if they if they think that the intelligence can grow, or the intelligence is something or something fixed, and and for me one of the most fascinating findings from 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 this from this last round of PISA in 2018 was the strong correlation between the results in in the PISA test and the proportion of students uh, in each country that think that their intelligence can grow. You no, know? so you can see in this graph that there is a, a positive correlation. When you have a higher proportion of students in your country that uh, think that their intelligence can improve, can grow, these are the countries with better results in in the PISA test. No, and we see that the Philippines um, was among the lowest in terms of uh, proportion of students that think that their intelligence can grow. So it's around 30 30 percent of the students in the Philippines think have this growth mindset. No, so. This finding, together with the finding on, on the level of bullying and others, are also confirmation of the issues related to the socio-emotional learning that is um, as important as, as the cognitive development in, in the students. And this is an area that um, we all should be more aware of. No? So uh, I also wanted to, to share today um, other findings from a study that UNICEF did uh, in the Philippines, uh, following a cohort of more than 3,400 children for almost six years, you know, from 2015 to 2020, right before the pandemic, 
So this was also a confirmation of, of the learning crisis and um, this, this, um, these findings from, from these results um, contribute to the discussion to better understand what are, what are the challenges in terms of the learning crisis and the learning recovery. So um, first, one of the, the findings is that in mathematics, uh, no student in, in this research appear to have the necessary foundational skills required to understand the grade four mathematics curriculum no? among the more than 3,400 students that participated. In literacy, the results are, are uh, slightly better, but it's only 25% of the students that at grade five achieve the level of reading and understanding that, that what's ex expected. Uh, uh, on the positive side of, of the finding is that uh, almost half of the students understood the meaning of, of short text in three different languages, in, in this case, the mother tongue, uh, Filipino and, and English. Also, another interesting finding is that uh, children from conflict affected areas were on average two years behind their peers in, in other groups. Now, this longitudinal study was done in different parts of the Philippines. And one of the areas was um, uh, Maguindanao in Bar. So the, the students there are on average two years behind the, their peers in other groups. And also children in conflict affected area demonstrated lower levels of socio-emotional skills. So this longitudinal study measured cognitive and socio-emotional skill development. And, and one additional important finding is that those children who attended preschool or the child development centers consistently outperform those who didn't attend preschool. And this is um, this was true for the, the cognitive skills, but also for the social emotional, the social emotional skills. Um, for example, in this in this graph, you can see the um, relation between attending preschool and social emotional learning. So the the line in green is those students in each of the rounds of the longitudinal study that uh, outperform those in the red line, th those children that did not uh, attend the preschool. No? This is consistent uh, for every round of the, this six, five year study. Also, there is a, a strong correlation between the foundational skills, in this case, mathematics and literacy and social emotional skills. We have seen this in, in other studies, including, for example, this, this correlation that I show in PISA between the growth mindset and the, and the results, uh, the cognitive skills. No? So this was reconfirmed for uh, both for literacy and, 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 and mathematics in, in the rounds that we did for, for, the, for the study. Um, and also related to gender. Of the, of the longitudinal study and also in, con, in the cognitive skills. And this was also confirmed in CPLM and PISA for, for all the subjects that were evaluated. So this is another area of concern in terms of developing um, tailored policies for, for the boys who are lagging behind in the system. So all, all the data that I've been showing is uh, pre-pandemic, but we know that with uh, COVID-19, the, um, the school closures have affected um, the learning levels and also um, exacerbated the learning poverty and the inequalities. And in some areas in the Philippines, there was even a double crisis after the super typhoon that hit um, many parts of the country. So the challenge of, of reopening schools and recovering learning was even more complex in, in this part of, of the Philippines, specifically in the, in the Caraga region and, and Southern Leyte. And this graph that, that you can see in the screen uh, shows a, a correlation between the length of the school closure and the proportion of, of children that can, re can read a simple text. No? And we see um, also this correlation that those countries that had the longest school closure are also those that have a lower proportion 
of children that can read a simple text at, at age 10. No? So um, this implies that the, the COVID-19 crisis is uh, going to exacerbate the inequalities and those who, who were behind would uh, face more challenges for, for learning recovery. Um, and in addition to, to the learning loss and, and the inequality, so we know that there are other effects of um, the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic in, the, in, in education and, and also even in the economy. So there's, there are some studies that have calculated the, um, the loss of average annual earning uh, in the future no, for, for this generation. Uh, but there are other effects related to uh, increasing of dropouts, to increasing potential increase of uh, teen pregnancy, child labor, um, and even um, domestic violence. So there are a number of uh, negative impact no, of, of the measures that have been taken. And um, for, for the focus on, of my presentation, I mean, the main concern is on the, on the learning loss and not only the cognitive learning loss, but also the social emotional learning loss. So UNICEF with other partners are recommending this called rapid framework. These are a set of global recommendations that, uh, that include um, reaching every child and keep them in school, assessing the learning levels regularly, um, prioritizing the foundational skills, um, increasing the efficiency of instruction and, and developing and expanding remedial programs. And finally, the D is for developing so psychosocial health and well-being support. Now, this is uh, more related to the point I was making on the social emotional learning. Um, but using this framework and going a, a bit beyond, I, I, I would like to finalize my presentation with some um, specific uh, recommendations for, for the Philippines, for the process of, of learning recovery. Um, one of the, the most important ones and, and related to the R in the rapid framework is reopening all, all preschools um, and keeping the schools and learning centers reopened. We know that recently for this school year, the, the process had um, accelerated, but preschools and in particular child development centers are um, are, have been lagging behind in the process that is important that we, we all can, can support it. Uh, the ECCD Council recently uh, released the advisory, ECCD Council advisory number eight, uh, recommending the, the process of um, reopening schools. So September 5 was the recommended date for this. And in BARM, uh, we know that they are setting for the the last week of September, but this all this process of reopening school depend on on the local government unit. So it's important to support them to to accelerate this process. Um, second is the conduct of rapid literacy and, and numeracy assessments and implementing remedial programs with an equity focus. We know that some children are, are lagging behind in the process, and it's important to have tailored tailored strategies. There are already great examples. Um, uh, for example, in Region 8, uh, UNICEF has been uh, working with the Department uh, of Education, with the regional office and, and the school uh, division to um, conduct these this, uh, rapid assessments and, and accelerate the process of, uh, remedial, of implementing remedial programs. And this is based on an experience from, from USA uh, with the ABC Plus programs in other regions that are also um, implementing this um, this type of strategies, but it's important to expand it to 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 all the regions. Um, third, uh, another important recommendation is developing social emotional learning strategies and mental health and psychosocial support for students and teachers. We we know that the Department of Education through the DRMS is already implementing this this type of strategies that, as I mentioned um, in the findings, is crucial and should complement the the foundational skills development strategies. Uh, fourth, the reprioritization of early childhood education. We know that during the pandemic, um, we all have lost attention on the first years and how important they are 
which was already a consensus before the pandemic. But we need to uh, regain the attention of this, expanding the access and quality, uh, and identify more effective institutional arrangements to ensure that we can accelerate this, this effort. And um, the fifth recommendation is launching a national digital learning program uh, progressively, but um, um, as early as possible at the same time, um, expanding the internet connectivity to, to all schools and, and distributing devices with learning contact, uh, content for rural and last mile schools as a priority, accompanied by, by, teacher, by teacher training programs. And, and this last point is linked to, to the next recommendation um, um, in terms of providing more support to teachers. Um, we have seen in the pandemic that uh, they have done an extraordinary effort to, con to ensure learning continuity, but we know that it's uh, critical to elevate the value of the teaching profession, providing more support and an and incentive for you know, an essential part of, of any education system. Um, the, the second to last uh, recommendation is developing policies for parental engagement in education, including a stronger teacher parent coordination mechanisms and promoting more um, interactions between parents so they can support each other um, with additional guidance and, and, and policies that promote their, their involvement in the education of their children. And finally, to, to, um, to, to finalize my presentation, the last point uh, that can make all the other recommendations possible is increasing the, the budget allocation and the investments in, in, in the Philippines education system. And especially for the implementation of the Basic Education Development Plan 2030. So some concrete recommendations that have been discussed of the, of, as part of the Transforming Education Summit national consultations are um, increasing the, the national education budget to reach at least 6% of the GDP and 20% of the national budget by, by the year 2030. So this would require um, strong political commitments to prioritize education and reach these levels that would ensure that, that there could be a, a real transformation in in the Philippines education. Also, um, setting at least 10% 10, 10 of the education budget to early childhood education. We know that this is one of the most effective policies to, to improve learning, to ensure that children access education uh, from year uh, when they are three and four years old and, and ensuring a quality service at this level. Another uh, specific recommendation related to budget is uh, doubling the, the special education funds from 1% to 2% on the real property taxes at the LUU level. So this would uh, increase um, uh, the, the budget that the local government unit would have to allocate for education. And finally, the promotion of partnership with the private sector and creating incentives for more private investment in education. We know the, the crucial role that the private sector can play uh, in transforming the education system. And we know that this is, um, this is a responsibility beyond the government or the public sector. We all that are part of the education system from the private sector, from uh, development partners, from civil society have, have a role to play in, 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 in this uh, important sector that are that is facing um, one of the biggest challenges no? it has faced in, in history with, with the pandemic and, and the additional crisis uh, brought by, by natural disaster. So um, I, these are some, some recommendations for discussion, but would love to, to, to hear from the panelists and, and then um, also answer questions from the public later. Thank you so much.